Hi guys, I wanted to make this video for a very special announcement. There is a new plugin on my radar that I think ONP would really benefit from. And this plugin is going to allow many of my clients and people who are using the ONP Digital Designer Academy to be able to bypass ZBrush altogether and go straight to Fusion 360 in the event that you already have modification software available to you. Typically, ZBrush is a great software because it allows you not only to modify and edit and clean and align and isolate 3D scans, but it also allows you to create quad meshes. Quad meshes are the essential tool to be able to leverage 3D scans inside of Fusion 360. And for many of my clients, they already have some form of clinical modifying software like Medico or Vitruve or something along these lines where they can create their modifications. But the tiny piece of the puzzle that they can't do the one remaining piece of the puzzle has a very high bar learning curve when it comes to picking up ZBrush. So it's always been a tough sell for many people who have the clinical modifying software already in their arsenal, but they just need that quad mesh to get into Fusion 360. Well, I'm happy to report that I have found a new plugin that's going to change all of that for many of my graduates. So let's jump in. I'm going to give you guys a full tutorial on how to find, install, and use, and evaluate this software with a 30-day free trial. So we're going to start off by going to exocide.com slash quadremesher. Apparently, Exocide is a private developer who develops and has developed the quad meshing algorithms for ZBrush itself, the very thing I love about ZBrush. So, and he's made it available as a plugin for many other programs, including Houdini, Blender, Moto, 3ds Max, Maya, and Fusion 360. Exciting stuff. If you want to go here, you can download Fusion 360 and you make an account. Once you make an account, you're going to be given an email and that email is going to have the downloads link. This downloads link will allow you to download Fusion 360 for Windows, Fusion 360 for Mac, and or even Linux if you run Linux. So I downloaded the Windows version of Fusion 360. And uh, once I do that, uh, you're also going to be given a installation and activation PDF. Um, in order to have this work, this is really convoluted, which is why I wanted to show you how to install an add-in. You actually need to take the folder in the zip file and you need to place it inside of the program data itself of Fusion 360. So in Program Data, Autodesk, Application Plugins, you need to paste this folder into that particular address in order for Fusion 360 to run this plugin. So to give you a sense, in my uh, Finder, I had to go to Windows, Users, My User, App Data, Roaming, Autodesk, Application Plugins, and then we're going to paste that folder inside this Applications Plugins section. Once we do that, we are now ready to open Fusion 360 and to find our brand new plugin under the Utilities tab. This Utilities tab has Quad Remesher right here, ready to go. And in here, we have the opportunity to use this to create B-reps, quad meshes, and forms or T-splines. So just an amazing plugin, and it, it works really well. For your first time use and to activate your trial, you need to go to the license manager, type in the email you used to make the account, and then start free trial will be a small button right here that you can activate. If you want to buy this after your trial, you can you click on the link here to take you to the purchase page. The purchase page puts this perpetual commercial license at $109, which in my opinion is absolutely nothing for the level of convenience and time this is going to save many of you in learning ZBrush and uptaking ZBrush for just that quad remeshing piece of the puzzle in Fusion workflows. So once you do that, let's now start off by importing a mesh and doing this quad remeshing exercise. Now, when I've been auditing this, I've had to qualify some of these scans and you do need to prep your scan somewhat, whether that's in your modification software or it's in a free tool like Mesh Mixer, it's up to you I'm going to show you an example of what you need to do and what you need to make sure is available in the mesh so that you get a good result. So this is a clinically modified uh, BK socket. It's coming from another program. It's been extruded and created. It's ready to go. The one thing we need to make sure we have in this mesh before we use that plugin 
is to have a nice smooth open boundary along the trim line edge. So I'm going to use this mesh mixer to quickly just create that and export the result. So hitting S on my keyboard to select, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do my best to select this edge um, above the trim line. So essentially we're going to be removing this part of the, uh, the mesh. So, and uh, so you could try and do this inside of Fusion. Fusion does have the ability for you to select and delete geometry just like this. But the one thing Fusion doesn't have, which prevents you from actually doing this, is that you can't smooth the boundary after you cut it. So that jaggedness carries through even when we do the quad remeshing, which is kind of ridiculous considering it's such a small feature. Fusion should be able to add a smoothing boundary command just like they have inside of this program. So hitting B on our keyboard next, we're going to be able to take that selection and smooth the boundary. So I'm going to create a high level of smoothness and just make sure that I get those two nice lines and we're going to create a new group as a result of this and hit accept. There's that new group. We can immediately press delete to uh, create this, this division. And now I believe if we go edit, we can separate the shells and have two different shells here for our use. I'm going to select the one I want to keep and I'm ready to go. So we're going to export this as whatever you want to export it as. I'm gonna put this on the desktop and I'm gonna hit save. And that is it. So whether you use Mesh Mixer to do this or not is up to you. The main thing to remember is that you want a nice, fared, open-edged trim line at the top for this command to work. Another thing to potentially consider is if we hit select, and grow our, our, uh, our brush here. If you can select the bottom and do the exact same thing, so let's create a boundary on the bottom, let's create a smoothness factor here, and hit accept, we can delete the bottom. And you know, if you have a shuttle lock or if you're gonna be blending to an, an, an end, distal end device anyway, having this open edge with this open edge is going to ensure that your UV lines are going to stay straight and not spiral up the shape which really does prevent us from using the quad meshing tool effectively inside a ZBrush. So depending on your results, you might want to also keep the opening on the open side as well, on the distal side, sorry, as well as the trim line edge. Now that we've done that, let's hop over into Fusion 360. So before we open this command, we are actually going to need to bring in our mesh. So let's insert a mesh, bring it in from our computer. I'm gonna bring in that one I just made, and there it is. Uh, where is my origin in relation to this? Okay, so I'm still going to, you know, try and follow my, my views. So I'm going to align this to the front view. I'm going to center it and move it to ground. Put the, nice, put that into a useful spot and let's hit OK. There is my mesh. We are now ready to convert this to a quad mesh in the utilities tab using the quad remesher. The quad remesher, we got to make sure quad remesh or quad mesh is turned on. We're going to select our body and we're going to have a target count I would say between 1,200 and 2,000 points is a good number. The higher numbers for more detail, the lower numbers for a smoother result. So I'm going to start off with 1,500 here, and I think that's the only thing you need to play with. You can play with some of these other things, but fundamentally that is all you need is to hit a quad count and hit convert mesh. And look at that. It's faster and better than ZBrush, and you get your quads. So the things to watch out for again is to, you know, if you wanted your distal end to be cut off down here, you don't have a smooth edge. And indeed these, these UV lines just go across and travel. So by having the open edge on the bottom, you would be able to control that much nicer. But look at your top edge. It's just there. It's the everything that ZBrush offers to be able to give you that nice result. This is doing as well. Let's quickly bring in our other version, or did I export the other version? Uh, I believe I did. And just look at the difference between this and the partial design, which has the bottom removed. So same thing. I'm going to rotate this center, move to ground, hit OK. And let's hide the result of the first body we did. So this one has the open bottom, right? And this, you know, I, I chose, pretend I chose where I wanted the blend to start so, you know, making this closer to the full diameter of what you're working with would be preferred. Uh, let's go to utilities. Let's do quad remesh. Let's select our mesh. 1500 points. Convert to B rep. 
and you are done. And you have your lines, you have your quad mesh, you are ready to go straight into modeling using high rich feature agnostic methods, using the quad mesh conversion in T splines, and you are done. It's really, really effective. I'm very excited to be able to offer this opportunity to the OMP field, being able to go from your modified software into ZBrush with this, into Fusion 360 without ZBrush is a game changer. So I hope this video helps. I hope this gets you excited about some of the opportunities this can present. I know many of you loathe learning ZBrush and by removing this one step, it's gonna greatly enhance your ability to jump into 3D printing right away in one software or maybe two using your existing modification tools rather than learning ZBrush. ZBrush still has a place in my heart though. ZBrush still is good for latticing. It's still good for color. It's still good for modifications. If you don't have any of those options available to you, ZBrush will do it all, including your quad meshing. But again, this is just going to be that one piece of the puzzle for those of you who have them, and it's going to greatly increase your workflow. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time on the next free video from OMP Digital Designer.